It's a pretty hefty beer. We're gonna shoot for an end result of about eight, eight and a half percent. Today we're brewing a black IPA using Kvike yeast. Um, it's pretty hot, it's summer in San Diego, so without fermentation temperature control, it's gonna be a great strain for it. Uh, we've got about 14 and a half pounds of malt, uh, primarily Maris Otter. I always like the um, added breadiness, a little bit more complexity, um, and then some old school sea hops, so Chinook and Centennial, which we'll walk you through. If you wanna check out the, the recipe, um, look below in the description and you can find the, the yeast strains we use, some of the enzymes that we'll be going through, um, as well as the, the grist. Yeah. Latte hard, dude. beers that I did looked beautiful in the bottle when I was carbonating, uh, but when I stuck it in the fridge it was actually uh, really hazy. That's a, a protein derived haze. Uh, it doesn't really affect flavor, but it can be pretty visually off-putting. This beer being dark is probably not going to be a huge deal, but it just helps in processing. Uh, also makes it gluten product produced, so any friends or relatives that want to drink your beer fits well within that. say but I screwed up another homebrew. Uh, oh, <laughs> I was brewing a pretty high gravity black IPA, um, got caught up in the brew day hanging out and ended up putting too much volume in my kettle so it really diluted it. My gravities weren't right. Uh, I'm sure perceived bitterness is going to be out of whack because of it uh, and the colors kind of off. So you know I dropped some of the some of those samples off with you guys. You ran it through some of your instruments and gave me some of the results. And I'm curious to maybe what we learned from it and what I can do better next time. So um, in the analytical lab, we can take that sample, right? And we can run it through several pieces of equipment to kind of help you gauge um, how those numbers that you're getting from your brew sheet or um, what you're expecting from that recipe. And we can take that and compare it to the actual values here. So um, the machine that's on the right um, right now that's actually moving, 
Um, this is a gas chromatograph um, with a headspace unit. If you were to get a DUI and they were going to take your blood and look at it, they're going to be able to actually use this exact same instrument um, to tell how much ethanol is in your blood. But instead of blood, we're looking at beer here, right? And um, so we're going to take this sample and we're going to you know, run it through this machine and we're going to be able to look at aldehydes, esters, um, fusels, diacetyl, and to be able to, to look at those values for you to see um, how they sort of compare to the, the sensory profile. So I used WLP518 Opshog Kvike Ale Yeast and usually produces a really flavorful beer, but some of what you're measuring here actually quantifies those flavors, right? Yeah, so um, what we can kind of see is whether or not some of those uh, esters or fusels or aldehydes are below or above um, the perceived threshold for those compounds. Um, and what we've seen, especially with some of those Kvike strains, is like, you know, you, you what temperature did you have it at? I pitched at about 90 and then let it ferment at room temperature, so about 75 to 80. Yeah, so even at those higher fermentation temperatures, we can see with this machine or with this instrument that it's really, really low compared to other ale strains that you would ferment at those temperatures. So the esters are low, the fusels are lower, um, and the acetaldehyde is, is typically with under um, our flavor thresholds. And that's indicative of the temperature I used it at or, or that strain in particular? Yeah, so it's indicative of a little bit of both. So we've seen with those type of strains that they're um, great at those higher temperatures because they don't produce a lot of those flavor compounds compared to other ale strains. But um, if you lower the temperature also, you would see those uh, flavor and aroma compounds come down also. So some of the other values that you were talking about in terms of color, alcohol, um, your extract values, uh, this instrument here, this is the Anton Parr. Uh, it's a density meter and a beer alkalizer combined. And so what we're doing here is basically we just decarbonate the sample and through this instrument we get a ton of values that are relevant to the recipe that you were talking about, right? So we can check um, a bunch of those values against this instrument. Uh, we decarbonate the sample um, and this instrument basically sucks up the sample and this is a really really expensive density meter here and that's going to figure out um, basically the density of the specific gravity right so in terms of that final extract value uh, that machine is going to figure that out and then um, once it goes through this alkalizer here it's using near infrared to actually figure out the exact alcohol content that's in there so when you're doing your recipe at home and you're saying okay this was my starting gravity and this is my final gravity that's all estimated um, based on a calculation and this instrument is going to tell you exactly how much is there if you have uh, the ability to do extract values really well, um, whether it's at a brewery or you know at your house, you can get pretty close to these these values. So um, this is a great uh, check to see how good your procedures are at the house. Yeah. So mine were obviously off, right? Yeah. I was calculating the the software I was using. Um, just used a, a standard brewery profile, and it said that my beer with the dilution should have been about. 5.6, 5.7% ABV, and you know the numbers that you gave me said it was 5.2 or 5.18, which was extremely specific. So what you're telling me is um, that estimation isn't always correct, but there are ways that I could maybe dial that um, brewing profile in to fit some of the data that you gave me so that I have more accurate results moving forward? Yeah, so your recipe is going to be an estimation overall. And then if you're taking your starting gravity and you're taking your final gravities, that's going to be the best estimation um, for you to be able to figure out what that actual alcohol content is. Whether or not that matches your recipe, that's where you have to sort of tweak some things to figure out you know, why, why did the recipe not match up to um, the values that you obtained at home? Um, and then this instrument is great to validate the, the measurements that you're taking at home also. Cool, so even though I screwed up a lot of the data that you've given me, I can still benchmark this beer and reproduce it down the road if I wanted to? Yeah, I mean, if you liked it enough, definitely, right? Um, and you wanna just try to hit, you know, those same, the same gravity um, by altering the water um, or your, your mash profile. Awesome, I'm excited to try it. I've kegged it up. Um, it's gonna be ready to serve soon. Great. It was a 
fun brew day, but you know, we ended up missing the mark on a couple points. I heard a few things, but uh, what happened? Tell me what happened. Yeah, so we were um, talking about the capacity of the fermenter, six and a half gallons, and as I was transferring to the kettle, I ended up putting six and a half gallons into the kettle instead of five and a half. So I ended up <laughs> diluting it, change of color, bitterness utilization, perceived bitterness. But I mean, I think the resulting beer is okay. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I mean, just on, just from taking a quick sniff, it, it smells like it. Uh, nothing went too awry. Yeah, so I'm assuming the ABV came out a lot lower than what you were going for. And yeah, we were able. I was able to sit down with Kara for a bit, um, go through the analytical lab, and look at ester fusel profile, and then run it through the alkalizer too. So it came oh, out nice. in the, the low fives, and I think originally I was shooting for high, about mid 8.5. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Big, a big one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know. Something went wrong. My efficiency <clears throat> might have been off a little bit too, but mm -hmm. I mean, I think it tastes pretty decent. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's pretty spot on for a black IPA. I mean, based on the appearance, you're looking at it and it's clear, you know, this this black color with a slight ruby hint to it, which is really nice. It's very appealing with the lacing and everything around the glass. Yeah, I so. used the World Flock tablet um, in the boil as well as Clarity Firm. Um, oh, cool. I added uh, when I pitched yeast too. So, you know, obviously haze can be caused by a lot of different things, but removing um, a lot of that protein and true coming out of the kettle and then um, eliminating any uh, protein chill mm -hmm. haze too with Clarity Firm, I think helped. And, and I didn't cold crash this at all and it looks beautiful, yeah. so. Do you, speaking of Clarity Firm, do you know if it, uh, the gluten content came out below? Yeah, the so dosage the rate um, that's suggested for the five gallons uh, did the job just fine. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's gluten reduced, it doesn't taste any different. No, not at all. Um, very, you know, on the nose, very piney from the hops. And then following that, the malt backbone, a lot of nutty pretzel, some chocolate. I think the chocolate is probably the more dominant malt character in it, and it just it, it meshes really nicely, which is surprising with the issues you had in your brew day. Yeah, you wouldn't think it would come out this this well together. Yeah, you think the percentages together. would have to be a little bit higher. Right. But I actually I like the malt profile, so the recipe that I have now accounts for the higher volume. But I think I would actually scale back the percentages to to match what that six and a half gallon. Uh, volume was yeah. in the future. I think that would that would work really well. The body is, you know, medium body still. It's not too light or too heavy, and carbonation seems to be on point. Uh, really dry in the finish, which I like. Going back to those, that old school West Coast IPA. Yeah. yeah, you don't taste too many black IPAs anymore, so it's no, it's too I miss it, and that's why I brewed it. Yeah, I love the uh, punch of bitterness. Let us know in the comments below if you've had a messed up brew day before. How did it turn out? Did it come out to be an awesome beer that you've brewed a hundred times since? Or is it something that you wish to never encounter again and you dumped it all down the drain? Because we've all been there. Yeah, we've all been there. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you are interested in more brewing related content, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And cheers.